When it comes to golf, we know there's a lot of things that you can spend money on, but there's one thing that a lot of people overlook that could really help you improve your game. Not only help you improve your game, but help you decide if you need lessons and when you need to go for lessons and how you're going to improve to get your handicap down. If you're looking to get into the teens, if you're looking to get into single figures, if you're looking to get to scratch, then this app could obviously help you lower your scores. And the silly thing is, all it's gonna do is get you recording how far you hit your shots and where and what area of the game you need to improve on. So when you go for a lesson, you're not just say, I need to hit my driver a little bit further. It might be short game that's highlighted. It might be long game that's highlighted. It might be driving that's highlighted like it is for this golfer who's actually spent some money. This is not an app that I have because unfortunately I don't play that much only when we're out here doing videos I don't play competitive rounds and I don't have a handicap whereas this golfer has a handicap is extremely tight but spends a hundred pounds a year to get a good value to help him lower his scores and enjoy his game a little bit more so that's a fairway, that's something that would be included in these stats. But let's get him in here now, let's talk through why he's actually spent some money because we know he never does. And then let's see which club he actually chooses from this tee and what does the app tell him to use. So, the man who spends no money is right here. It is Dave, and what app have you got, Dave? I've got Arcos, Chris. We've got Arcos, so you'll see in the end of the club, these are little devices that go in the end of your club, which help track your stats, Dave, track how far you hit clubs. How far you hit clubs, what your dispersion is, um, it then gives you stroke gained on every part of your game, so put in um, short game, approach play, off the tee, so all that stuff, and then it'll, um, it gives you idea, not ideas, but it gives you advice. You can't use it when you're in competition, but it gives you advice on what club you should be taking, because it can take into account the slope, and the wind direction that it takes off some other website, I guess. Perfect. And Dave's just trying to load the app. I am, but it's telling me it's that not... I'm still on gear. So we can see he can get onto his app. He can start to get some stats and numbers, which you'll see on screen now. For example, he's got his three wood and his five wood on there. It shows him how far on average that goes, which you'll see on screen now. But what are you going to use off this tee, Dave? As that loads, let's get your club out. Well, we see that you've got your club out. Well, I'm hoping to use the driver, although Arcos tells me that that's generally not always the uh, the club I should be using because I don't hit it there very well. Yeah, you'll see on the screen there, Dave's obviously losing shots with his driver, so on here potentially that's not the right club. But let's see, let's hit one with Dave thinks he, well, Dave thinks he wants to hit driver, and then we're going to hit a five wood, which is what Arcos is telling him to hit. Dave doesn't have a three wood in the bag, but it does store that information, so if you get new clubs, you'll still have information on there and it really helps you know your numbers. So off a tee box, you'll know if you're trying to lay up, if you're trying to go for a green, if you're trying to go for a par three, you can pick the correct club, depending on the conditions and slope. So that's but it'd be happy with that one, I think. So it would be very happy. So Arcos would pick that up and say, that's a fantastic drive there for Dave. Just ran into the rough. But, David, take that. Let's get your five wood now, Dave. Just had so, a panic on then, Chris. I thought I'd lost my tee again. Dave's thought he lost his tee, but it's there at the front of the tee box. So, Dave's been using his five wood a lot because this has been going pretty much to 200 yards. Yeah. So, only 20 yards short of his driver, but a lot more consistent, Dave. Is that right? Yeah, but it didn't have much to go up against because my driver wasn't very consistent at all. No, it didn't. But Arcus does highlight that. That's where... It does. It says going. my short games. Um, and it gives you what your handicap should be for each part of your game. So, me again, you'll see on screen now we're to exactly what Dave means. So, obviously, with his driver, it's saying that he's a higher handicap than what his actual handicap or his world handicap is saying. So, he knows that if he's going to book a lesson or for the winter, what we're going to work on is obviously driving. We want to get him not only into the correct driver, but we want him to be finding the center of the face and not losing shots with that club. It's a great shot with the five wood just up the right hand side that looks like it's just going to hold the edge of the fairway so let's get up there now let's see what Arcos is saying and let's play both golf balls and see which one is the easiest to score with. Have it Dave's five wood just clinging onto the fairway and then up there probably 30 yards further when we walk up there is just into the first cut so into the semi rough 
throttle is in play. So it's telling me to hit a five hybrid to lead myself 66 yards to the green. Okay, so let's have a quick look at that, Dave. So, so on the screen, you will see there it's telling Dave to hit a five hybrid. It's saying him to leave him a hundred and oh, it's telling him to leave 66 yards. So is that right, Dave? Yeah. Right. So interesting there. So a lot of people here would obviously. Just get the firewood out, all the three wood if you had one in yeah, the bag. Yeah, you get whatever was your longest club other than your driver and, and try and get it as close as possible. Yeah, and then we often see the old Tommy Top and it only goes 50 yards and then you've still got a hybrid into the green. So Dave's going to go and listen to Arcos with this golf ball and then with his drive, he's going to play as he would normally. And we'll see which one scores better. It's a spare ball there, Chris. It's a spare ball. That's, that's just mine in the middle. Oh, it's of course it's yours, isn't it? Yeah, do you remember? That one that went straight down the middle. So my ball went further than yours. I should hope so, because I had a five wood, Dave. <laughs> so, keep up the good work. <laughs> I knew that. I just wanted to see if you remember. Right. You're sounding like James Robinson here. <laughs> to deal with two children on a daily basis. <laughs> well, it's the life you've chosen. Right. So... Five hybrid. And that is straight down the middle, Dave. Yeah. That should leave you 6'6, six, six, but no real effort there. Nice and easy. No, just a steady shot. Effortless, right. Didn't, uh, um, maybe that's maybe that's the key, maybe that's what it's telling you that it, once somebody of my standard thinks, well I can't hit the green, so I'm just gonna lay up to a reasonable distance. You're not trying to hit it as hard as possible to get to within, I don't know, 15 yards. Yeah, that's been very easy. You've hit a yeah. five wood that you're comfortable with. You've not swung out of your boots. You've then just hit a five hybrid. Nudged it down there, as we'd say, down the middle, nice and long. Let's go and play this one as you would if you wasn't using the Arcos. Okay, so up at this golf ball now, obviously, Dave's going to use, we'll have a look what Arcos says. Dave's going to hit his five wood from here because that's what he just said to me that he would do because mm -hmm. he thinks he can sneak on there as the squirrel runs across. So, Arcos, first of all, it's going to tell you how far this drive's gone. Right, it's just having to think now about what yeah. club to take, mate. It's telling me to, it's telling me to take me five wood. It's telling And me. it's telling me that it's 198 yards to the green. Which would be a pretty much a perfect five wood, because the five wood off the tee did go 196 yards. So if Dave does hit this right, this could potentially get there. But again, this is what we start to see that people go, oh, I can get there, and Arcos tells us I can get there. If I give it a bit more, I'll guarantee it gets there, but let's see. Dave should be swinging within himself. Not my best, Chris, because I was trying to hit it. He was trying to hit it, even though I told him not to. So, pulled yeah, it never taken a notes what you said, do I? Never do. If I never did, I might do, be a Dave. better player. But I'd say that's probably got nearly the same amount as in as the hybrid, <laughs> and that was more effortless. So, guys, again, this is an app that Dave has bought. This is what Dave pays for. It did originally come with his clubs, and he's kept it on there. And it's more for deciding if you need a lesson and what areas of the game you need yeah, to work on. Yeah, because it shows up, you know, it shows up what I'm reasonably good at, which tends to be a minute short game, obviously. Yeah. Um, and it also picks up what you're not very, very good at, which, although that was a good drive, it normally tells me that the driving's sort of a 25 handicapper rather than 13. Yeah, so for £100, do you think it's good value? I do, yeah. Perfect, right. Let's get down there. Right, so Dave's down here in the fair with the hybrid, and we can just about see his other ball in the rough. So he's probably gone 10, 15 yards further, but he's now out of the rough and got a tougher shot into the green. So it's going to be very interesting here. He's got a nice shot into the green from the fairway which if we talk about fairway and rough should have a little bit more control from here so we should get it closer and if we're closer we should have a better chance of lowering those scores how far dave 76 76 so not quite the 66 that arcos requested yeah, but arcos from him. didn't know it was at the back correct so arcos has done it to the middle of the green there so it has left him a distance that obviously arcos has measured that dave is good from this yardage obviously he's hit some shots where this is a comfortable one to get close. So, club-wise, Dave, is it telling you a club? That's the big question we want to know. No. So, no, it's not suggesting a club for you. So, Dave, what club are you going to go? Are you going to go sand wedge, wedge? No, I'm going to go 52. 52. So but Dave, not a full one. But not a full one. So, Dave knows his numbers with this. So, Dave's obviously been chipping well from this distance for Arcos to suggest it as a layup. Let's see what he can do before we go over into the rough. 
So 76 yards again, tour average from here would be around about, you know, we're still looking at 20 feet for tour average, so anywhere on the green for Dave would be a good shot. That's a delightful shot, straight at it. And we said inside 20 feet, I think Dave might have stuck it inside 10. Good shot. Thank you. Right, Dave, so in the rough now, obviously sat down a little bit in this thicker grass, so what are you thinking from here? I'm thinking pitching wedge, try and drop it, so, I don't know, five yards on maybe, and it should roll up to the pin or somewhere near. I don't really want to try and flight it all the way. No. One, I'm not sure I'm good enough. Two, chances are I might thin it. And um, three, if I didn't thin it, I'm not sure it would stop out of the rough. Yeah, so... Good option there from Dave, obviously playing a pitching wave, seeing how it reacts. Again, obviously at this time of the year, greens could be wet, so it's very hard to judge. So a premium is hitting it in the fairway. We know you can clean and place. We know obviously you can dry your club, we can dry your golf ball, so we can get as much control as Dave did on that previous wedge shot. Let's see now from the rough. And I duffed it. Which should be what you expect out at rough sometimes. So he snagged in the rough a little bit. He's not done a bad job, but now from there, Dave's probably just outside 30 feet where he potentially brings in a three putt. Yeah, but and that's, as you were saying, Chris, that's the thing. You know, you probably got an advantage, even though it were 20 yards further back, of still being in the fairway rather than being in the rough for your third shot. It's on the green, but you know, it's not great, is it? So we've got eight feet there with the one from the fairway and then we've got around about 35 feet so interestingly enough tour average from here would be saying that you would be more likely or a tour player would be more likely to three put than two put so again for Dave here there's a lot of pressure on two putting which he didn't need after a good drive then he's tried to obviously get a little bit aggressive and try and get to the green and now he's struggling maybe even for a bogey Disaster. It's yeah, further away than other. We can see there, Dave's obviously trying to get out of there, try and get it as close, but a little bit aggressive because just like that whole playing of that hole, driver's aggressive, five wood's aggressive. He's then played it, tried to play a simple chip, hasn't gone great, so there's a lot of pressure then on him trying to get out of there, even with a bogey. So Dave gets a shot on here, he's got giddy, and then from there, he's now struggling for a net par. This for a five. So a good roll, left himself a bit of work. But let's do this one here now then, Dave. So you've got eight feet for this. This is for your par. So again, from here, percentage-wise, if you go on PGA Tour, you're looking at 50-50. So for Dave, mid-handicap golfer, we're probably looking at, you know, one in six, one in eight. Not high percentages from here, but he's got the chance, and that's the thing that we've been able to do from playing simple. A five wood, a five hybrid, a nice little 52 on, and this for a par. Ooh, just bad, over the edge, a good one. Let's tap that in. Easy net par. It's an easy net par on this long par four. Again, in the winter, we're not getting much run, we're not getting anything, but it was easy. So would you say that I mean, I know you can't use it in competition for recommending clubs and stuff, but when you're having a practice round, would you say use Arcos and then learn from it? Yeah, perhaps? start to think about what conditions you're playing in, what it's suggesting. So if you're in the summer and the weather's good, then you can obviously start to get an idea of what you do in the summer. In the winter, when we're not getting as much run, it's a little bit wetter out here, although it does look fantastic here at Waterfront, we can still use that to get an idea of how you're going to score better when your winter comps and get ready for your summer comps. Yep. I noticed you picked that one up, Dave. Were you giving yourself that? I was, yeah. I can, I can have another go at it. No, Chris. it's all right, Dave. So a double bogey there. So a <laughs> double bogey. A double bogey. A I might not have got it, Chris. I might not have got it. But I did. But he did. So, guys, Arcos, a great system. Something that's worth the money. Dave spent money. Keep spending money, Chris. Dave, keep spending money, which we know is a rarity. He's doing it on a yearly basis. So there's a lot of other options out there, but look for that. Collect your stats, and then you know that when you're going for lessons that you're able to tell them exactly what you need to work on. And, guys, if you're looking for online lessons or in-person lessons, do drop me an email on that email below. I'd certainly like to help you out this winter and get you ready for next season. Unfortunately, the winter is 
quickly upon us, but we need to be ready, ready to go when it comes to March and April when competitions return, just like this month.